For our next to the last Sunday in John, we continue our way through the sixth chapter. In verses 1 through 15, Jesus fed a crowd of thousands who had an immediate need for food. In verses 25 through 34, Jesus explained that he was the bread that would feed them on a day-to-day basis. And as we come to today's section, Jesus begins to draw in on a promise about the bread that has inspired many who have faced either their own mortality or the deaths of those for whom they deeply care. This has been a tragic week on the East Coast. Hurricane Debbie struck Florida and worked her way up the East Coast. The resulting flooding caused many to lose their homes and businesses. Most tragically, as of Friday, at least eight people have lost their lives to this storm. One was a child. One was a 78-year-old. A couple of weeks ago, I had a minor surgery. Nothing serious, but when you're under general anesthetic, things can go wrong. Part of preparing for that was getting paperwork in order for a scenario in which I didn't survive. Whether it's natural disasters, accidents, illness, or simply reaching the end of a long life, whether our road has been long and winding or so short that death came prematurely, death is the inevitable end of each of our journeys, assuming we're not one of that unique generation still living when Christ returns. As we discussed last week, Bread in this passage is a symbol of that which sustains our lives. In the Gospel of John, miracles are signs, like the feeding of the thousands unveiling who Jesus is. One of the things these signs point to is that Jesus is the life giver. But in today's passage, people stumbled over Jesus, saying that he was bread from heaven. After all, they knew his family and where he came from. They were as befuddled as old Nicodemus, trying to figure out if being born again meant you had to go back into your mother's womb. Honestly, not all of what the Bible teaches is easily grasped. In verse 47, Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. And in verse 51, Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And going back to verse 44, Jesus said, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. And that raise them up is the language of resurrection. So, when Jesus says that he is life-giving bread, he isn't just talking about our mortal lives, but our lives now and our lives after our bodies have died. Honestly, I'm just not the type of person who obsesses about heaven and life after death. My focus is more on how God with us today is life-giving and enriching, transforming God's people into agents of truth, justice, love, mercy, and faithfulness. But death has touched my family and friends, and when I do face death, I am comforted that the same God who walks with us on this side of the grave walks with us on the other. (laughs) Sure, I love to sing old songs like I've got a mansion just over the hilltop that talk about heaven as a place where we live in a mansion and walk streets of gold, but in reality, that kind of language is symbolic. Modern translations of John chapter 14, verses two through four, capture the spirit of what Jesus said more accurately. My father's house has many rooms, If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. The point isn't how luxurious of a hotel room we'll get. The point is that we'll be home living with God and with our family of fellow believers. Jesus put the concept of being alive in Christ concisely in John chapter 17, verse 3. Now this is eternal life. And he's praying to the Father that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. 
My siblings and cousins have all been materially blessed. We live in much nicer homes than the little place we shared as children. But we still look back at our childhood as golden because we were together with one another, our grandparents, aunts, and uncles. No amount of wealth, no mansion could ever make life better than that. To understand that is to understand what Jesus is saying about heaven. Heaven will be more than just living on and on forever. It will be living with loved ones, and especially living eternally with the author of love itself, living with God.